Merry Christmas to you all. Oh, April Fools, it's Easter. Oh, oh, you're all so gullible. I can't believe you fell for that one. Happy Easter. It's a beautiful day. I'm so glad that you were able to join us on this holy day to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. It's an interesting thing, of course. We have no witnesses to the actual moment of resurrection. In fact, last night as we were uh, singing the Exalted, I was noticing again how the only one who witnesses it is the night. And it says, how blessed is this night. You who, the only one that knows the time that he raised from the dead. And yet, this is the central fact of our faith, that Jesus rose again. Now, how do we know this? Not because someone saw him rise, but they saw him after he had died, back alive again, and he weren't no ghost. He, he did all these things to prove to them that he had indeed risen from the dead in bodily form. But over the centuries, of course, there's always been struggles. How do we know? Do we just take their word for it? Well, we can't just read the Bible and say, well, somebody wrote it, so it must be true. That's almost as foolish as saying, I looked it up on Wikipedia, so it must be true. For those of you who don't know out there, not everything on the internet is reliable. <laughs> you gotta be careful, sifter, just saying. Some of our younger people might not know these things yet. So I just want to make sure it's clear. But at the very heart of our faith, we have to put our trust in this. So why do we trust? I'd say one of the deepest things to put it on is on the fact of the testimony of the apostles to death. What do I mean to that? by that? If they had decided, oh... Let's start this religion. We were really, really impressed by this Jesus guy. So let's start this religion and see if other people will follow us. Let's say mm, uh, that, that they killed him. Oh, that would be great. And then, then that he raised from the dead. Oh, this will be a great joke. And then when they come after us and they put us in prison, we're going to hold to our guns and say, oh, <laughs> it's going to be such a great joke that he really raised from the dead. And then when they scourge us and, and torture us, oh, we're going we're gonna to really have a big joke here as, as we hold to our guns there. Oh, and then when they say, oh, we're going to kill you. <laughs> That's going to be the biggest joke of all. No one does that. No one does that. At some point along the way, if it was a lie, if they had not seen Jesus raised from the dead, if at some point along the way, Along the lines, they had said, you know what, this is just a good way, a feeling of Jesus kind of raised in all of us, and oh, kumbaya, that'll be great. They would have given up on that. By the imprisonment, or the torture, or when they were about to be put to death. And over and over and over again, the ones that claimed to see Jesus risen from the dead were martyred. I think, I think they might just be trustworthy. That we can say, yes, if they were willing to die for this, not some sort of a joke or trick or whatever, then he must have been raised. I don't know about you, there are a lot of things I'd rather not die for. And a lot of those things are certainly lies. If, if I were, if I were going to you know, tell a lie and I wouldn't die for it, I'd say, nope, nope, I'm sorry, I was just lying, I'm sorry. Um, I got egg on my face, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get over that. We put our faith in these people who are willing to die to say Jesus rose from the dead. But it's more than just the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. That would be nice and wonderful and good. But that resurrection is for you and for me as well. This promise of resurrection that God says, not only will I die and rise, I will show you. I can conquer death. And don't we need that? Don't we need that in our days? Because there's so much death 
in our country. Well, there's so much death in our world. Of course, there's the natural death that happens, but so much where we look at the evil that's in the world. We need to know God conquers that. And even when we're not looking outside of us, when we look inside of ourselves, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of a slob. I just got, I don't have my act together in so many different ways. There's so much about me that's just wrong. So much in darkness. And Jesus says, I have conquered that. I will take care of that. I will change that if you allow me to. I will resurrect all of that which is dead within you. There's this beautiful um, uh, a prophecy that Ezekiel has where he goes out, you're familiar with this, where he goes out to this plain and God shows him this plain all full of dried bones. And then God says, prophesy to the bones. Prophesy life to them and they're drawn back together and the hip bones connected to the thigh bone and the thigh bones connected to the knee bone and the knee bones connected to... You hear the word of the Lord. You know that song, right? Oh, you don't? Okay. It's one of those songs I sang, I sang growing up. But in any case, uh, so it all comes together and then prophesy to the Spirit and the Spirit comes and now they're alive again. That God can take the dry bones within our lives. Those things which are in darkness, those things which are broken, those things which we say are just covered in shame, too much for us, the failures in our lives. And He can bring resurrection. He can bring new life. He can transform you. He can transform me. And I trust Him. This is the mystery of Easter. Not just that Jesus was risen from the dead, but that we also have that promise of resurrection. Not just in the life to come, but He can come and do this in our lives. In this world. Drawing us into the very heart of His heart. And so, my sisters and brothers, I challenge you this Easter. I challenge you this Easter. If there is something that you have in your life that you're holding on to, some darkness, some sin, some shame, some brokenness, Maybe it's something that you've done. Maybe it's something that somebody else did to you. Whatever it may be. If you have some area of darkness that you're holding on to. That you don't want anyone to know about. That you're clinging to. To keep it stuffed down. Or whatever reason. I, I challenge you. Hand it over to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. He wants to make it new. He wants to bring resurrection. He wants to bring light into the darkness. He wants to bring life to the dead. That which is lost, He wants to bring and make found. The only thing that will keep God from transforming, from resurrecting, is if we say, I don't want Him to. I'm going to cling to this. Let us, in Easter joy, surrender our lives, our hearts, our brokenness, our sinfulness, our darkness, our shame into the hands of God and let us see how He brings new life and resurrection to that.